This is kind of like a continuation of last week's episode where right. we were talking about this amazing, amazing soldering job that Robbie so, did. So good. Oh, so Such a valiant help. effort. It actually worked. <laughs> it actually to describe it. worked. By some kind of television miracle, it worked. Yes. Jeff, do you remember way back on episode number 431 when you recommended that I buy... Battery powered. A battery powered soldering iron. Yes. Do you remember that? I do. I just want to say for the record, it sucks. <laughs> well, let's be clear. That is not the one I had. Oh, let's be clear. That one's not the same. It's not exactly the same model. It's a battery powered soldering iron. Mine was, the one mine's that. great, though. Is it great? What is it great for? Uh, it's great for little at home projects. Little um, at home projects, okay. Yeah, like the, I will fix uh, light bulbs. Um, you know, you can just replace them, right? No. How do you fix light bulbs? When, um... Like you build a new filament out of solder? No, like, you know, with, like... <laughs> I, I like to tinker. So, like, with Christmas bulbs, you know how there's the wires that come yeah, in yeah. and replace them? Sometimes they'll break, and I just don't feel like... All right. You know, buying a new one or whatever. So okay. you put them back together? Yeah, I'll just heat them up, put them together, and they work great. They're All fine. right. I'll put together some of the kids' toys that break where they've got little metal elements, stuff like that. Huh. So, so last week, Jeff, I built this board here, and I did a smashingly good job. Oh, my. Quasimodo, man. Maybe we should pay attention to the 5 volt. It looks pretty good. Hey, that looks better. Yeah, that looks pretty yeah. good. That looks pretty good. Um, and I was using this wireless thing, and I, I really don't like it. And I said to the viewers, I really don't like it. So I, I know I'm blaming my tools, right? Mm-hmm. But I put new batteries in it for the sake of the demonstration. It still didn't really heat up very well. wasn't really working. Okay, how did you use it, though? Poorly. I am an amateur. Okay. And I am an, an admitted amateur. But right. I'm learning. So You're is, learning. Is, is that learning. a quick heat up? Pretty quick. I'd say like 40 seconds. Oh, yeah. So not so bad. Mine is like a five-second heet up. Oh, you when you're showing five seconds? But, like, I would never start using it the five seconds. I let it heat up, and then I heat the end I'm right. working with. Then I throw the solder in. Okay. Lots of advice came in after last week's show. Of course. Should we tackle this, Sasha? Yes. You've got your list of comments that came in. First of all, I'm going to start with Circuit Man's comment. Yeah, as Circuit you Man says it's, it's okay for me to do that because yes. they get longer and angrier as the comments go on. No, everybody, thank you so much for your kindness. That was uh, very kind this week. Circuit Man says, awesome show, and Robbie, your soldering is better than mine. It's a good start. Yay! For someone named Circuit Man, I figure that you are probably in the know, so I appreciate that very much. Right. Robert Putnam said that soldering iron is fine, but your soldering technique is backward. Wipe oh. the hot... Ah! <laughs> ah! Hey. Wipe the hot tip off with the cloth so that there is minimal solder left. Okay. Ideally, the tip will be shiny. Use the clean tip to heat whatever you're soldering and feed the solder onto that piece, not the soldering tip. Right. What's happening with your method is that the solder is oxidizing mm. and preventing mm -hmm. any flow to the piece. Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. So I did okay. a poor job by touching the solder to the hot tip and then touching the tip to the... Yes. Right. Well, don't do okay. that. Right. Don't so do that. Did, okay. We're learning. You did we're that. Learning. Don't do it. Okay. Okay. Next up. Uh, from Igerwald. Igerwald. Flux is magic. Pen, SMD, or paste through hole. Okay. Also said. I've, well, I've seen I've seen flux. Right. Sorry, did did Igerwald say something else? Also said, yeah, you need some desoldering to tools. Oh, okay. Yes, so two comments. Also. First comment is about the flux. So yes. the solder that I bought has two percent flux. So I am a novice. I'm not using solder, uh, I'm not using flux in addition to the solder, but I'm using one with a, a rosin core. Right. So okay. is that, is that going to help me out? Is that going to work? Now, I understand, though, from, uh, from just doing a little bit of research since our feature last week, that by touching it to the tip first, it's hot, and I'm actually burning off the, the, uh, the flux before I get to the board. Right. So I'm, I'm kind of counter, I'm yes. uh, counteracting the effects of having a, a, a flux core. Right. But the solder itself has built-in flux. 
Now, if you had a flux capacitor, you can go back and tell yourself not to make that mistake so That's you wouldn't ru ru ruin the flux core. It says 2% on this. A C128D says it's not 2%. It actually, what does it say there? It says flux 2%. 2%. Diameter 0 0.6 and a bunch of numbers that I don't know what they mean. Next up from Igerwald as well. Sorry, you, what was that yeah, one? Yeah, just that you need some desoldering tools. Some dude. desoldering tools. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to come back to that one, okay? Okay. Desoldering is like I've got boxes of circuit boards and motherboards that are dead that I want to be able to desolder, so remove some of the components so that I can then reuse them. So it's like getting oh. free stuff from e-waste, basically. Right. right. So I get some resistors, get some capacitors, loads of capacitors, lots of headers, things like that. So oh, okay. C128D says 63 slash 37 solder, which has 37% flux. 37%? Wow. That's a lot of flux. flux That's like half flux. Is flux. Good. Wow. Okay, I didn't even know such a thing existed. Well, now you do. Mm. Okay. And knowing is half the battle. When Thank you know you. better, you do better. All right. <laughs> uh, Marshman. We're learning here tonight together. Marshman. Personally, hey, Marshman. I would never use a battery powered soldering iron. Okay. There is too much risk of a cold solder joint or cold solder joints and flaky connections. Not that we encountered any of that. No. Not that we encountered any of that during our feature. No. As the battery drains, and if you do a lot of soldering, good luck finding the bad joints. Right. As R Robert Putnam stated, the technique is to heat the joints and touch the solder to the underside of the iron while in place on the joints. Okay. The solder should flow nicely on into the connection. Be careful. Too much solder and it will flow out the other side of the board and you have a glob of solder that can cause a short. If the solder balls up instead of flowing, the joint isn't hot enough. So do you think that that's all it is? Is that I'm just not, I'm not heating up the joint first? Like if I actually, if I bring this up for you, so let's get a look here. So let's get a look at one of my terrible joints and get, so I'm going to get out the same wireless soldering iron. Which is going to take 45 seconds. Did so you clean it? No, I haven't cleaned it. I've got, I've got this wire thing. But now, it was mentioned there that we need to get like a sponge or something to, mm -hmm. to actually clean it off. Now, I've got this like wire Thick. cleaner that I've seen people use. And I thought, hey, that's cool. Dollar Store sells those. So, yeah. hey, that works, right? And it does work, but it's not a wet sponge. Right. Um, so, if I heat this up, is it going to make a difference? Let's get some of my 2% <laughs> flux solder. And let's see how this goes. All right. So I'm going to heat that right up first. Let's use this one because this one looks like I didn't get any solder on there whatsoever. P1. So what they're saying is heat that up. Right. Then let the let's get some heat in there. Then you let the, the coil then into the heated area. So you don't heat it. Let's there straighten out my solder there. And let it draw it in. Okay. I'm having. Oh, there's the flux. Oh yeah. Oh okay. There. Look at that. Wow. Oh, you did it. What a difference oh, that made. That looks really good. Thank you, Sasha. What a change from your attitude last <laughs> week. <laughs> well then. <clears throat> so um, I hate to be Captain Obvious, but. Does the battery powered unit work? Does it work? Yes. Yeah, and I put new batteries in it for the sake of the demonstration right. last, last week. Absolutely. Mm. It, okay. It does, like, I, I had it turned on so during I, the demonstration. I feel, vindic I feel vindicated. Okay. All right. <laughs> Viewers, thank you so much. Uh, this is part of what I love about Category 5 TV versus other webcasts, other TV shows, is that we're very, we try to be very interactive. And this is an opportunity yes. for you to, uh, to teach us. And in so, we're kind of bringing that about and bringing it back to the viewers as well. So hopefully this is a good learning experience for mm -hmm. all of us. That's true. Next up. Uh, so Sean White. And hey, I, Sean. I love this. Says, amazing 555. Episode nine. Episode 555 yeah. last week. Yeah. Nice work, amazing tech tips. Love the microtech. I smell espionage tactics. Nope, that is flux. <laughs> Says, well done. After 555 episodes, still by far the best tech show out there. And Aww. I've looked a lot. Keep up the amazing work. 
Wow, thanks, Sean. So even when you have a horrible soldering job, <laughs> we're still the best thing Wait, out there. What is this? Is this gang up on Robbie Day? Like, come on. That was a really but great one. Work. He was saying 555 five, five was amazing. And P1 was great. Yes, yes. So just a, now that you've got the solder working, imagine how more amazing 556 five, is going to be. Oh, 556, five, we've already shown you right. how good 556 five, is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> JM, was 555 a coincidence? I'm about where Robbie is with this stuff, and soon you'll find out that 555 is a somewhat special number in beginning intermediate electronics. Oh. I did not know that. I didn't either. The timing circuit. 555. No, that was entirely unintentional. Last week just... Yeah, no, we, we, we've been doing this show for every single week for 555 weeks, specifically so, specifically so that Robbie could do a miserable soldering job with a miserable tool. That's what we've been working toward. Like, everything led up to that moment. No, we didn't, in, we didn't intend that. That wasn't a plan. Well, we just needed a baseline soldering job from you so that we can gauge that was from the base. So that now we can see uh, on episode 1055 how far Robbie has come. Exactly. exactly. And, and it will be a robot in my place. Yeah, AI yeah. running the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next up, V2. Vito Joe, Joe CR. Right. Some comments on your soldering to make some improvements. Okay, so here we go. Once again, showing how the community comes together and is directing us and giving us feedback that is going to improve our soldering job. Yes. So, number one. Use lead-based solder unless you want it to fail. Okay. Your soldering iron can also work at lower temperatures. With lead-based solder. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. I didn't know that. Um, the reason there's a couple of reasons that I switch from lead. Now here in Canada, I cannot get um, I can't get approval to sell devices that I create if they contain lead solder. Right. So I decided to change to lead-free because I do intend to eventually get to the point where I'm good enough that hey, some of the things that I'm building can be sellable. Right. Um, we're not there yet. No. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not, not selling you anything with miserable joints. <laughs> this could be yours. Now, <laughs> with that in mind, earlier when C28D said 6337, yeah. that's the tin lead ratio. So that wouldn't work oh. in this case. Oh, okay. If you're, I see. If you're going to be okay, reselling Okay, so that's, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, so, so that's for home use, the but for, if you're going to resell it, you can't use that. But for home right. use, you'd be fine. Okay, so there's two other reasons. I don't have good ventilation. That's reason number two. Oh. You don't so want to I don't want to be breathing it in. No. I don't want to be like the Mad this Hatter. Is a great hobby, but I don't. I don't really need cancer right now, and so I'll learn with lead free. I'm happy with that. Good call. Um, third reason kind of stems from that, but also my kids. I really want my kids to participate, and so part of it is getting their hands on the solder, mm -hmm. getting in there, and we're using lead free solder so that I don't feel worried that my my 10-year-old right. is putting his fingers in his mouth after soldering something with right. a, a lead, lead core. So, right. so there's a couple of things there. So I, I absolutely, sure, lead-based lead solder may be better for some uses, mm -hmm. especially in you know professional um, soldering jobs. But yep. I think for me, I'm going to stick with the lead-free. So we just got to make it work. Right. Point okay. number two. Yeah, point number two. Uh, you don't add the solder to the tip until you've heated up what you're soldering. Then, and only then, you add the solder. Thank you, okay, so, that one out. yeah, uh, Marshman commented on that as well, so yes. excellent point, and we proved tonight that that is a very good comment. Right, uh, number three, if you put the solder on the tip, you need to clean it off. Just like that. Makes sense. Everything that you did, you need to undo, Robbie. <laughs> I heard you saying, thinking that. Yes, so uh, the longer the solder's on the tip of your iron, the more flux you destroy. Oh. Just what I was saying. Yes. And I probably, it was in my head because of V2 Joe CR's comment. Right. Having read it earlier. Mm -hmm. Very interesting and good point that I'm actually burning off the flux. Yes. Which is going to cause issues with my solder joint. Absolutely. Yeah. And I understand that. So that's cool. And then keeping in line with that, mm -hmm. flux is your friend. It helps solder the, helps the solder to connect to your components. Uh, he says as a bonus tip. But I'm bum. Please watch some better people solder before you make an attempt to put it on Please TV. Please what? <laughs> Please watch some better people solder before you make an attempt at soldering on TV. Hey, come on now. <laughs> come on now. Okay. So let's back up and talk a little bit about what Category 5 represents. And, and first, before I get into that, I want to tell you and everyone viewing, never let someone tell you don't 
show what you are learning. Don't right. Never, right. never be afraid to fail. Never be afraid to show that I'm not good at this. I'm learning. And the reason I say that is because I think if we all need to achieve this excellence before we're willing to share it with the world, then Category 5 wouldn't exist. I'm proud of you. Aw. It's like Thanks. a public service announcement. This is really, that's a really great message, just right across the whole globe. It's, I, it's what Category 5 represents. Yeah. Like, we started with a webcam, and we stepping stoned our way up. Yeah. And we're looking at stepping stones tonight. And, and along that line, never, ever feel that way. You need to be able to fail and you need to be able to do it in the public eye and it's okay and it's okay to have friends that laugh at you and it is absolutely and it's cool to learn and and i love this show because i can i can learn with you and we can learn together and and i appreciate your comments and, and we're we're learning together i did a pretty good solder joint there yeah, yeah you, you did. did and how many times have we done episodes where you're programming something oh or, and it fails uh, yeah and it just sure. it goes horribly wrong but that's part of what makes the show great is because some of those shows are the greatest shows to learn from because sure. you watch it and you go oh my goodness i've made the same mistake a hundred times and i couldn't <laughs> figure out what the issue was i think right. we're real too well yeah exactly there, and there are a lot of great shows yep I, I'm we're real. not just cg we're, there are a lot of great shows on youtube and on the on television that they figure everything out beforehand and they do it when it's perfect yes and so then i as the lay person feel like i i'm not at that level i can't achieve this i can't try this yeah let's start here and let's work our way up together. You know, to be honest, it wasn't pretty, but it worked. It worked. Like, you did it. I did it. I did it. Go team. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the comment. I appreciate yes. that. Um, so, C128D yes. first has said recently in the chat room that you need to use separate flux paste that's if, if, you're you using if you're using lead free. Yes. Okay. So, so even, that's important. So let me get this straight. Even though I have a 2% flux core in my solder, so I thought, oh, well, it has flux built in, so I don't need to buy flux. Are you telling me I need to go out and buy flux paste so that I can add that to my solder joints before I heat them up? That's Is that the idea? right. C128 Maybe. is he, uh, D is here with us live. Uh, uh, we'll move on with your, your right, questions so then and we'll come back to your, your response to that question. Okay, so C128D also says, <laughs> 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 Robbie, you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a, a decent soldering iron. All you need is one that plugs into a wall outlet and runs off of AC current. Any of the Weller line would work out quite well for your needs and are reasonably priced. Just select one that is between 20 and 40 watts. Amazon carries them for about 15 to 20 or 15 to 30 dollars US. <clears throat> Not sure what that is in Canadian rupees. <laughs> Um, and they do an excellent job. Welder, Weller, sol so I can't say this word. Solder? Solder. Because there's an L in it. it you, we're Soldering always going to get somebody. Stations. One of our biggest fans is going to say, it's solder. No, it's, it's solder. It's solder. Yeah. I'm just always sure. going to try and say so so A Weller soldering station? Station. Normally started about $100 US. Okay. Getting one of the regular irons now and having it as a backup when you can afford the soldering station wouldn't be a waste of money either. Yeah. The iron is more portable and less of a hassle for a quick and dirty repair for quick and dirty repair than the station is. But the main thing is that just about any AC powered soldering iron will be better than a battery powered toy. Be sure to use 6037 solder. It's better for electrical work than 6040. Okay. C120 AD, you said it without saying it, stepping stones, mm -hmm. right? Because in my mind, I'm thinking, I need a soldering station. I need, the, I need the, at least the entry level of the best. Right. Right? Bang on, my friend. This is what it's about, is finding that stepping stone. So cheap, battery powered, doesn't really do a very good job. The batteries, don't last, long, the batteries don't last long enough for doing a good sized project. No, I, I so, agree. That's why it's good for small things. For like a quick, like two joints. Yes. And then you're done. Now, I love what C128D pointed out here, that you can get away with just a standard soldering iron, which is a big step up from this little guy, right. but not going to cost me the amount of a, my, my dream station. So I can right. work my way up to that soldering station right but right now i can get started with something a little less very cool and i did <gasps> no and i what did. did you do first let's look at david fear 
Okay, David Fear says, get one of these and points us to a link um, to a $70 um, OLED programmable um, uh, soldering iron. Okay. On Banggood. Very cool. Um, but still $70. Mm-hmm. So I may as well look at the $100 right. soldering station at that point. It's starting to get a little bit close to the price. And recommends as well that we look at 6337 or 60. 40 leaded solder yes. going right. back to my comments so based on it, largely what c120ad said about being able to start with something cheap and work your way up mm-hmm. and then still use that old one as just for the little tr- yeah. tinkering here and there totally works and then based on reading what david fear sent and saying hey yeah we can do that I got on Amazon, and you can head on over to cat5.tv slash solder kit, and it arrived already, so obviously available on Prime, and I picked one of these up. Let's see. And it is way microscopic compared to what I was expecting. I was expecting from the picture that this was going to be like a full-size toolbox. Right. That's little. (laughs) It's like a a mini, like a mini toolbox. Should we get into this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get this out of the way so that I can show you folks this. So this was the next step from this. This cost me $30. Now I'll tell you, C120AD, you mentioned like the $16 wellers and things like that. I got on Amazon, I started looking around, and the cheapest that we could get here in Canada was $22 Canadian, and it was not brand name, and it was just a a cheap soldering iron. Right. Um, So why I went with this kit, it's only $8 more. It came with the box. It came with extra tips, and it came with some extra essentials. So let's get in here. And this is going to also take us back to Iger Wald's comment about having um, solder, desoldering tools. Right. Okay? Okay. Let's get in here. So into the box. Boom. First and foremost, a solder sucker. Oh. There you go. Is that for excess solder? Oh, that's fun. <laughs> it also pinches your face. Is that for excess? Like <laughs> this is for removing solder um, so you can heat up the solder and then suck it oh, off okay, gotcha. so that you can remove chips and things and reuse. Right. That okay. is or, cool. Or fix when you mess things up. So Whatever. that, if, if you ask me, that's worth probably the extra $8 anyway. Oh, exactly. It came with a whole bunch of solder. Now, what is this? Lead-free solder wire. Perfect. This is 2.0 flux, um, 20, ga- uh, 20 gauge. No, eight, 0.8 millimeter versus my 0.6 that I have here. Right. So similar to There's what I have, there. but it's got a lot. Yeah. 20 grams, I guess that is. Okay, so it's got this itty-bitty tiny toolbox. Yeah. How cute is that? All right, it's got a box within there. What do we have? And remember, this was only $30, so... Okay, what do you expect for $30? It's got a little stand that is basically just a cheap little tray right. with a couple of nuts that, hey, you, you can hold what? your soldering iron there. Oh, uh, yeah. And it's got a sponge that you can wet to clean it. So I didn't have one of these. Now I do. So that's cool. But it's not as nice of a holder as my helping hands. No. So I'll probably just end up using my helping hands anyways. But if you don't already have helping hands... That's something, anyways. Then, exactly. That's in the box, kind of thing. Okay, what else have we got? We've got a couple of um, a couple of tweezers. Right. These are um, anti-static, and I like that. The tweezers that I have have become magnetic, so I needed new oh, ones. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's a pain because I'm working with little itty bitty resistors, and they're magnetized to the yeah. tongs, which yeah, makes it really, that. really hard. Then we've got the soldering iron, obviously, but a couple of extra things that came in the kit. Uh, it's got desoldering wire. That's cool. Nice. So desoldering wire. Desoldering wire. I can put this on all those bad joints that I made. Right. And I can remove. I can touch this to it and heat it up, and it will suck in the solder, absorb it, and then I take it away, and the solder is off of the joint. No. Yeah. So I That's need good. this when I correct the soldering joints yes. that I've created. Okay. Then I've got my soldering tool. Here you go. Now, what is what really excited me about this, and Dave Fear pointed it out on the one for $70. Let's actually bring this up through the magnifier, the, through the microscope, so that you can see what I'm seeing here. It has a temperature gauge. Oh, and it goes nice. from 20, uh, to, pardon me, from 200C all the way up to t- uh, 450. And it's just a dial. So mm-hmm. for a cheap little thing, that's pretty good. Look at what else we've got. It, it does go up to 60 watts. Cool. So it's a pretty 
you know, it's going to heat up pretty quickly. Yeah. Apparently, um, should do a pretty good job. Sorry. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, we're going to be checking it out on future demonstrations and seeing how it works. So, but then it also came with one, two, three, four, five oh, tips. extra tips. So we've got some extra tips there that came with this, and each one is a little bit different for different jobs. Right. And I expect that as I grow and learn how each one works, then that's going to be cool. So if I remove this, I can see there's my tip. Oh, so you just slide it right off. And then it's got a ceramic core. Oh, okay. So the ceramic core, apparently I'm learning, is very quick to heat up. Yes. And so that's a good thing. I'm going to gently put that back on. I have a hair straightener that's similar. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So they does that really, heat up really yes, well? It, yeah, it does. Good. I like that it has the uh, adjustable temperature. Mm -hmm. um, and it does have also an inline power switch, which was an added bonus because you normally have to unplug one of these kinds right. of soldering irons. So it's a good start. I think this is a great for little 30 kit. Bucks? Yeah. For 30 oh, bucks, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's available in our shop now, cat5.tv slash solder kit. Now, I've been able to get, obviously, it's available here in Canada as you see it here. It's also available in the United States as you see it here. In the UK, they don't have exactly the same kit, but I found one that's very similar, and it's only 14 pounds. So, oh, um, right. so you can check that out. And it even has a couple of extra things in the UK, but I obviously can't test it because it's a little bit different. But it looks like about the same thing, and it is what it is. It's a cheap soldering iron, but it's better than what I have, and it's going right. to get me started. Exactly. And I like that it came with all this extra stuff that I'm going to need anyways mm. for my projects, um, and just a cheap little case, which appeases my need to have organization because otherwise right. everything just sits in a cardboard box. Now, is it a quick, cool solder iron as well? Uh, well, I haven't plugged it in yet, okay. but I don't expect so. No? Okay. Uh, no. I, I didn't read anything about it being okay. anything special. That's why you have that cooling, handy little holder. Quick so to heat up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It is quick to heat up. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, but I can put it in my, my helping hands, turn off the power switch, which I guess is going to help anyways, because yeah. being able to turn off the power switch and turn it back on and it's got quick heating, then it should work yep. pretty well. Mm -hmm. But we will find out on a future episode how much better that works than my, uh, my old battery-powered soldering iron. So you don't want to miss some of the features that we've got coming up. And do check out that kit, cat5.tv slash solder kit. Now, I know it is just a cheap kit. It's going to get you started. It's going to improve our game. It's going to help me to do a little bit better when it comes to soldering. And some of the things that we're learning here on Category 5 Technology TV is really helpful as well. If you've got comments you want to share with us, comment below or head over to our YouTube channel on our website, category5.tv. If you're watching on cable TV, um, there are so many different ways that you can interact with us. We'd love to hear from you and love to find out what, uh, what we could do better. 